Is there a growing threat to the very existence of the United Nations Command, or UNC? Headquartered south of Seoul at U.S. Army Garrison Humphreys, the command is led by the U.S. and officially operates to enforce the armistice that brought the Korean War to a state of ceasefire in 1953. But we're getting a constant trickle of comments out of Seoul and Washington concerning a possible declaration to formally end the Korean War. Among the latest updates, we've seen South Korean Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs Che jong gun travel to the US to meet with his counterpart Wendy Sherman. After arriving in Washington on Sunday, Che said he expected a good result from discussions on an end-of-war declaration in the not-too-distant future, adding that Seoul's goal with this is to trigger a denuclearization process that North Korea cannot walk away from. And Seoul's foreign ministry later confirmed that Che and Sherman did discuss the matter. Yet a peace declaration would be more than just a catalyst on the North Korean side. It could also have a significant impact on the UNC. South Korea's pursuit of a formal end to the Korean War is calling the UNC itself into question. And it's no coincidence that North Korean ambassador to the UN, Kim Sung, last month renewed calls for the UNC's abolition claiming it serves to legitimize and perpetuate the U.S. presence in South Korea, as well as regional American military goals. So, even though it's not certain whether North Korea will do much negotiating with the current South Korean government, knowing a presidential election is just around the corner, there are concerns Pyongyang could seize this moment to try to undermine Washington's military position here. While it's true that the U.S. has struggled to quell speculation that it views the UNC as a strategic counter to China's rise, South Korea and the U.S. have been working for years now to shift wartime operational control over to Seoul, and Washington has been seeking to diversify the UNC. For instance, three-star generals from Canada and Australia, rather than the U.S., were appointed to the UNC in 2018 and 19 for the first time since the command was founded in 19. The UNC has also launched a PR campaign through social media, celebrating the military involvement of various countries from the Philippines to New Zealand. And besides, the South Korean government's stance is that the UNC would not be affected by an end-of-war declaration because it was established not by the 1953 Korean Armistice Agreement, but through UN Security Council Resolution 84, adopted in July 1950. Seoul has also tried to soften concerns about the UNC's future by insisting via the foreign ministry that an end-of-war declaration would be a political, symbolic measure rather than a legal change in the current armistice regime. But in that case, why would North Korea agree to it?